Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, I'm your host, Mrs. M. And if you haven't, make sure you click the link below. That way you can subscribe to my channel and not miss out on anything you need to scale your business to six figures and beyond. Wow. So I'm excited today because I learned a lot about FEMA and I am a big fan of doing disaster relief. There's so many areas in disaster relief. And what I love about it is it's under the Department of Homeland Security. The other thing I love is if you do not have your cage code, no worries because you can do state emergencies and you can do federal. Now, once there is an emergency declared, I'm gonna talk about in this video some things you can do as far as organizations you can join or you can be doing a lot of peer-to-peer -peer networking. This is something that I actually learned a lot about because I actually joined one of them to see how much information you can gather. So if you're looking at doing disaster relief contracts, which actually started the hurricane season started June 1st and goes to November 30th, this is one of the things you wanna make sure you do. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the actual screens. We're looking at FEMA right now. If you're looking at doing disaster relief, you absolutely on a federal level need to make sure that you are registered to do, to do business with FEMA. Now, two things I'm gonna tell you. One, FEMA loves, love, love, loves to make sure that you're prepared. So you're going to need your cage code if you're coming here, because that means that you're going to do um, disaster relief on a federal level. Now, of course, you're going to make sure that you go in and look at what phase you want to do, which is mitigation, preparedness, recovery, and we look at our response and recovery. One area that I really, really love is recovery. Why? Because recovery, it could be like you're painting a wall. $2,000. It's really, really great for getting those small past performances under your belt. And because if you have that, that thing I always talk about, your P card, your purchase card, your purchase card is your merchant account. And the, well, your purchase card is what the government uses to pay for small services up to 10K. I love it because there's over 10, 20, over 100,000 government buyers that can government contractors, you know, like not contracting officers, but people that have the P card on various, you know, different levels that can purchase tens of thousands, like hundred thousand. So like, for instance, one of my girlfriends, she does uh, event planning. She's the admin. She has to do a lot of event planning for like some government agencies. And so she has a P card, her limits up to like maybe 5,000. So whenever she does some type of event, she'll use her purchase card to actually book an event or a caterer, boom, bam, just that simple. Now, I asked her, what makes you choose a company that's brand new, that doesn't have any past performance you know nothing about? One of the things she said is, when we're looking at doing that, we may give you something that's like $900. We may ask you to bring something that's $900 because we're always gonna look to give someone new a chance. We have to. We cannot keep using the same vendors over and over. So because of that, they're going to go on something really, really low to test you out to see how well you do. If you do well, guess what? They put you inside of their Rolodex, you would say, or on their like on their roster, which means the next time they're going to see that your performance was outstanding, you're going to be able to use them as a past performance. And then you're going to put down that your total contract value might have been $900. Well, guess what? The next time they're going to give you a little bit more, just like credit. You start out, you don't have any credit, they give you 500, you do a good job, they give you 1,000, do a good job, they give you 5,000, so on and so forth, and the rest is history. Same thing with past performance. They're going to look to see what you've done, what you've done well, and if you do a really great job, you're in there. So then you're going to creep up a little bit more. You might get something for 1,500, knock it out the park, 2,000, knock it the park. You're going to keep going where you're going to, your, your value, your total contract value, which is what a lot of government buyers look at when they're looking at hiring you because they want you to not be like, what is this? That means you don't know what the heck you're doing because the total contract value is so much higher than what you've ever done. As you do a little more and a little bit, a little bit more, you build your team. You start to get, you know, like really, really cohesive. I know when I've had teams, we might do something and it's all everywhere in the beginning. And then everyone kind of settles in and starts to learn. You may have employees and you may have, you know, the middleman where you have other people subcontracting. 
And then you find a really nice pattern and everyone works together and that's your team. And you keep those same people to go to the next and the next and the next. And that's how you scale your business to one of my favorite phrases, which is six figures and beyond. Wow. Now, what are you going to do when you come to FEMA? You're going to come here and they've talked about, FEMA's talked a lot about going to advance contracts and goods and services. A lot of those are large companies. So there's very little you can do. But one thing they do say, and I always hear this, you don't want to do it at the last minute. So you want to get started absolutely right now because we're actually in the thick of it. but We haven't gotten really ramped up with the most active part of the hurricane. So this is the time to do it. Get the cage code. Make sure you don't wait, not like one next day because the cage code takes a while and a lot of people are doing it. Why? Because we're in the buying season. We're in the fourth quarter. This is where the low hanging fruit gets picked up and utilized. Do not sleep on this. The buying season starts officially, as I like to say, July 1st and goes through September 30th. Now the government's always buying, but it's a lot easier for them to utilize your services when you're small and you don't have any past performances during the fourth quarter. That's when they have more money left over for things that they can afford to purchase furniture and other things. Now that's not what FEMA is. FEMA is for emergencies. But there may be something that Department of Homeland Security may need or Health and Human Services, but we're going to stick with FEMA for a second. Get started. Go to your vendor profile. I can't speak about that enough. Once you go there, you're going to simply fill it out, and they've updated it. They've gotten a, quite a few more disasters in there, um, asking other questions. But no matter what, when you go down here, you're going to see where it's going to ask you a couple of questions. And then it asks you, does your company accept government purchase cards? It's there for a reason. That's because they are looking to do small jobs very quickly with companies that can do business with them. And not only with FEMA, but you can do a lot of simplified acquisition procedures under the micro purchase threshold, which is 10K as of, the, of this recording of this video, because it changes. So next year it could be 25K, but right now it's 10K. So there are a lot of paint jobs you could do or little small jobs you can do or something that you can really, really build that past performance. So don't sleep in quarter four with a government purchase card. Get to the bank, use QuickBooks, whatever, but get that merchant account. Now, once you know that you've done FEMA, let's say, for instance, you want to do it on a state level. You don't have your cage code. You're not interested in your cage code. I get a lot of people that say, Miss M, I don't know if I want to do my cage code because they're asking for my physical address. I was going to use virtual. That changed about a couple of years ago. No more virtual addresses. If you put down a virtual address, trust me, and Sam.gov, they're going to ask for a lease because they're going to know it's usually virtual. And if there's a little question, they're going to send something back before they give you that cage code through DLA, Defense Logistics Agency. They're going to ask you for a lease agreement. So we don't want to lie. That's not what we want to do. So if you don't feel comfortable with utilizing your, your home address and you can't afford a, you know, like um, a physical office where you have to have a lease, then you might only want to do the states. So state has, we want to go to usgov and us.gov state emergency management. Every state has an emergency management. You want to be in the database on the state level county, definitely, because there's federal, state, and local. Local is your counties. I can't tell you how many contracts I got from the county level. How many students of mine and clients get contracts from the state and local level? Do not sleep on that. They have a lot of money they want to spend as well. So in tandem, normally you're going to have the state and the federal, or maybe um, that there's some things that you want to do on the state level that you don't want to do on the federal level. Make sure you come here. All of the states are going to be listed. They're going to give you a list of the states. And when you're looking at the states, this is where you want to go. It gives you a list of all the different states, and then you can look at finding your state, making sure you're registered on the state level and on the county level. Now, while I was at the FEMA meeting that I had gone to recently, because I love to get more and more information, one of the things I heard a lot about was registering with, and let's see if we can't find it. Yes, let's see. Uh, let's go here. Bam. Registering with the National Emergency Management Association, yes, you want to be involved with other agencies, other organizations. You'd be surprised how much information you get. You get to you get to know a lot of the key players, 
It's a small world when you're looking at really, really being focused. Remember, I say if you're looking to make money and scale your business to what? Six figures in beyond, how? Then you want to focus in, not out. So many people go further out and they get lost. You want to come in because remember, the advantage you have as a small company is that you are focused. Large companies are a little bit more everywhere, but they have the manpower to do it. We normally don't. And so we want to focus in and do what? Be very, 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 uh, I like to say specialized. That's what we want to focus on, being specialized. So if you want to be specialized in the disaster response, management, debris, all of that, then you want to look at doing FEMA. You want to look at your state and local databases. And you want to look at being, if you know, if you don't want to become a member, just look at this. And that's called National Emergency Management. So this is like, instead of FEMA, it's National Emergency Management Association. Come here, look at what they have. There are a lot of opportunities. If anything, maybe go to one of their meetings. I did. I met um, a lot of individual people, did a lot of meeting and greeting. Uh, you can see they have a lot of webinars. They have different things here. Um, I love it because they meet up and you can meet a lot of people that are into storm, debris, management, all kinds of things. And you could easily become a sub for someone that's there. You want to look at networking and really, really, really getting into it. The more specialized and focused you are, the more you're going to see so many people want what you have. Now, I know I said a lot in a short period of time because I try to give it to you just like that. But if you want to learn more, there's two things you can do. One is you can sign up for our GovCon Lunch and Learn series. Every Wednesday, I do a training like this on something different. Also, we have our signature course back, Crack the Gov Code. You're going to see a link in there for both of them. That means you can sign up for our Crack the Gov Code. We have our absolute launch party, which is our free masterclass. I go into so many different things when it comes to, into the Crack the Gov Code, but it's our signature program where we go into teaching you everything everything from A to Z on no bids, bidding, how to really focus to win a contract like in 90 days. All of that is what we focus on and we do it with great detail with Crack the Gov Code. You can sign up for the free launch party. We're gonna have a ball. It's gonna be July 16th, 17th and 18th. Don't miss out. But if you want to come and visit me tomorrow for one of my GovCon Lunch and Learn series, then make sure you do the same. There's also a link in there for our Facebook group. We have a great community of Facebook members that are so eager to help. I saw a long thread where one of our, our members was answering a question that someone had. So we all worked in together in tandem to make sure that our goal is to help one another reach the figures that we're looking at in our business, okay? There's enough out there for everyone. So I look forward to seeing you soon and just make sure that you click it See you there. And until next time, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.